So what do you do if you're talking to a seller and they just want way too much money for their property? What can you say? How can you negotiate? How can you bring them back down to reality to get them more realistic about the price? Uh, what can you do in those situations when you're talking to somebody who wants to sell? They may even be motivated to sell to some degree, but they're just kind of stuck on a price and it's just way too high. What can you do in that situation? In this video, we're going over a couple different ways that I personally handle when I'm talking to sellers about to do real estate deals to buy their house and when I run into that, that they just want too much money, which by the way, never happens. Sellers never want way too much money for their house. They always have a very realistic, like as is understanding of their property and market values. And okay, that's completely not true. They almost nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, the person that you're talking to, even if they're like really motivated and they need to sell like right now, is still gonna probably have a price that's a little bit too high. So how do you work with that? How do you build rapport? How do you talk uh, like it, them into a more realistic price? Uh, what can you be, be done, if anything at all? So if you stick around to the end of this video, you're gonna get my best advice, the third thing, the third option, what to do in those situations, which is probably what you're gonna end up doing like 99% of the time. So stick around to the end of the video. Uh, if we've not met before, my name is Jason Baca. I'm a real estate investor in Pennsylvania. Uh, um, I've been doing this for a couple years now, still kind of just a beginner, but uh, depending on how you count it, been able to make a little over $200,000 now in net profit in some of these deals. I still have a full um, a day job and uh, a wife and four kids, got another baby on the way. I'm just as busy as you are, so this is just in a handful of deals that I've been able to do on the side in addition to my day job over the last couple years or so, and uh, it's been going pretty good. So double, double six figures now in net profits in some of these deals, and so this YouTube channel is for you. If you also want to get your family financially free through real estate, consider clicking that subscribe button. Click, click, click. Uh, I drop videos all the time, just about every week, honestly, on this YouTube channel, along with some YouTube shorts to help you get up and running in real estate, figure it all out, and start making money in real estate as well. Uh, okay, so we're going to get into if you're a brand, brand, brand new beginner to all of this, um, this may feel like, uh, um, you know, I hope I'm not going too fast or, or talking about too too many intermediate level things. But the, the biggest thing that you have to realize is that when somebody has a certain number in their head of what it is that they want for a property, that they got that number from somewhere. And so one of the, the best quick hacks that I can give you as far as talking to somebody who wants a price that you know is too high. Maybe you've ran your comps. Maybe you've kind of like done your due diligence, some research. You, you kind of know about ballpark where you need to be in the property or the, the purchase price, uh, depending on how you're going to buy it, which we'll get into in a second. But you, you kind of know where you are and your numbers are just way off. And so uh, the best thing that I've found when, when I'm talking to sellers is to just simply ask. I literally just say the line, let's say they want $200,000 for the house, but I know that it's only worth 100000 as is, or maybe that's my price. I can only buy it for 100000 They want 200000 So what I always ask is, hey, uh, let's say the guy's name is Mike. Hey, Mike, uh, I, I know that you want uh, $200,000 for the house. I'm sure you didn't just p pull that number out of the air. I'm sure you, you, you came up with that number for a specific reason. What made you come up with 200000 and that's it. That's the line. That's I know it's it sounds super simple and straightforward, but that's kind of the idea. Is whatever number they have, if it's too high, like two hundred thousand dollars, just affirm. Number one, say I'm sure you didn't just come up with that number from nowhere, right? You're kind of like already setting the stage, like that. I hope you're not just picking this number out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm sure you didn't just come up with this out of nowhere. What made you decide on 200,000? What what made you? What motivated you to to choose that number? What made you pick that number? And then they're they're going to start telling you why they picked that number and that's when you get into like the nitty-gritty, the nitty-gritty of really what's going on with the situation. Are they really motivated or not? They might say uh, well, I've had a couple of real estate agents look at it and that's what they said it's worth, you know, and then you can ask the follow up question. OK, why don't you just hire one of them and put it on the market and, and you start digging, right? You're, you're going to have to ask a lot more questions, but the price is usually a sticking point or I saw my neighbor's house sell for the same price. 
or sell for 170 but we have an extra bedroom so it's got to be worth at least 200 or the person's going to say uh, well, I've already put a lot of work into this house and I just replaced the roof and I, you know, I've spent, I had somebody tell me this, I spent over $70,000 in the last year fixing stuff. And so, you know, I need to, it's got to be at, at least what I paid for it worth plus $70,000, which as you know, as a side note, a lot of times people will overspend in fixing up their house. Um, so that that's not always true. But uh, the whole idea here is you want to figure out why they picked that number, why they picked that number. That is going to open up a whole world to you of conversation with them as to how you can actually solve their problem. If you can start to talk to them about like a realistic ARV, let's just say in this hypothetical situation, $200,000 is like ARV which means after repair value, which means um, if the property was fixed up, like all the other houses in the neighborhood that are fixed up, the most it could sell for is 200,000. But you know, you know, let's just say guessing there's probably 30, $40,000 worth of repairs here. So you know that it's, there's no way you can pay $200,000 for it. And so you start having that conversation and you got to figure out why they came up with that number. That's a big part of it. If you want to know more about negotiations, I have uh, more YouTube videos on this channel for you. Um, so let's just say they're stuck on a price. It's $200,000. The guy, Mike, he wants 200 grand. It's really only worth 100 to you um, at that at uh, for for its as is value right you can only pay a hundred he he's stuck on two two hundred here's one of the first things you can do and that is to offer terms offer terms if you're familiar at all with creative financing that's usually like uh, taking over a, a mortgage subject to or seller financing the seller financing you the house those are the kind of the two big wings of the creative finance bird um there, there are other types of creative financing but those are the the most common and the most popular subject to and seller financing so what you can say here's the line is hey mike i'm not saying i can but i might be able to come up to two hundred thousand to your asking price if you are willing to work with me a little bit on terms now, a lot of times, like 99% of the time, the person's not going to know what terms are. So they're going to say, what's terms? Or another way that I phrase it sometimes, I don't want to overwhelm you with too many options, but you could say, I could come up to 200000 but only if you're able to offer me terms. Or another way that you could say it is, um, sorry about that. Another way that you could say it is, uh, I might be able to pay you 200000 for the house, but it's going to have to look another way. And then you pause. And then they're going to say, like what? And then you go into basically a creative finance pitch. You're, you're basically going to offer terms to say, you know, unfortunately, Mike, this really doesn't work out for us on our end for $200,000 in all cash. If we were to pay $200,000 for this house, honestly, we'd probably end up losing money on it. Um, so we're, we're probably not the best buyers for this at $200,000 in cash. But I'm not saying I can, but I might be able to come all the way up to $200,000 as a purchase price for the house. It would just have to look another way. Or I might be able to come all the way up to $200,000 as a purchase price for the house if you were willing to work with me on the terms. And then that's when they say, what are terms? And they say, what, what other way does it need to look like? And that's when you open up the door to the creative conversation. You always start with cash, anchor with cash, right? Show them why $200,000 doesn't work, right? It doesn't work because it, you know, you've told me it needs this, it needs this, it needs this. I'm looking at comparables in the area. You know, we're estimating it's probably going to be about this much in repair costs. If we sell the house at top dollar, what we can get for the house, you know, you subtract closing costs, you subtract transfer tax, you subtract the real estate agents, commission fees, et cetera. At $200,000, I'm just afraid we would end up losing a bunch of money at that price. Now, I might be able to still get you that price if you worked with me on terms or if it looked another way. That's how you bridge the gap to have that conversation. By the way, if you're just getting started in real estate and you want to get jump started and you need to get some leads, you need to get your phone blowing up and your inbox blowing up, uh, I give away a free jump start guide. Just click the link below or just go to REI Jump Start. It's seven free ways to get your marketing going so that you can get your first or next deal within the next 30 days or so. Um, anyway, that's for you if you want it. Okay, here we go. 
Number two, strategy number two, if the person wants way too much money for their house, you could offer terms, right, and have that whole conversation. Number two, this is a good one. You just wait longer. Just wait longer. Uh, one of my favorite things I've heard Jerry Norton say, which, I mean, he says brilliant things all the time. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. But he says, motivation changes daily, meaning it's minute by minute. So somebody might be stuck. Go back to our hypothetical situation. Mike wants $200,000 for his house, and he's stuck on it, and he's dug in, and I'm not going to sell my house unless somebody writes me a check for two hundred grand, right? But what can happen is a week later... A few weeks later, a month later, six months later, his life can change, right? Something with the house might change. Um, you know, the tax, he might be paying the taxes and or paying his mortgage and maybe something happens and he, and he can't make his mortgage payment anymore. Like motivation changes all the time. Maybe he actually was barely interested in selling the house, but six months later, he's just done with the house. Like maybe something, you know, it, it's usually like... Um, uh, a health crisis or a marriage crisis or something has, has happened where Mike no longer is stuck on $200,000 all cash for the house, which we've already established is way too much money for that house. Um, maybe something has happened. So when I say just wait longer, what that means is if you can get the feeling in a conversation with the seller that this person really is just not that motivated to sell, they don't really want to sell, a lot of times they'll actually just tell you that. Like, I don't really need to sell, they don't really even want to sell, I'm just kind of curious, you know, uh, I saw your marketing, or uh, I saw that you sent me something in the mail, or, you know, I, I figured I would at least just get an offer from you, see, see what it is. They really may not be that motivated um, to sell, and so therefore you just kind of leave it alone. And then you just wait longer. It reminds me of a scene from Ace Ventura, that old movie. Uh, I was way too young to be watching it. Uh, no shame to my parents. But uh, I do remember a scene where he comes out of the bath. He's going into the bathroom or something. And he says, if I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> I've always thought that was so funny. But just wait longer. If, if the person is not willing to negotiate with you on the phone today, just wait longer. If the person wants too high of a price and they're stuck on that price right now, just wait longer. And you'd be surprised how many how many leads come back to me that we have the initial conversation, it's really just not working out, and then they'll see more of my marketing like a month later, two months later, and that same person will reach out. We'll have another conversation. They're still not quite there, so we just say, I'm sorry, it just it seems like I'm probably just not the best buyer for you at this time. It's good to hear from you again, though. And then a few months will go by, and then they'll reach out again to some marketing. And so I actually have one house I ended up not wanting to buy it because it just was such a wreck. And and honestly, the, the guy could give me the house for free and I, I probably wouldn't want it. It was just, it, it ended up being too, like, uh, too far gone. Um, but uh, it started off at like he wanted, uh, how much did he want? He wanted at least $10,000. This is a, a tiny rundown house in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. Okay, so you may be saying $10,000 for a house. Like, yeah, it was a small house. It's kind of, you know, super shaky foundation. You could see. Like just walking up to the house, like you could see the entire foundation wall just like crumbling and bowing, and it's like, yeah, yeah, this is this is gonna be a problem. Uh, and the house had other problems as well. But he wanted ten thousand dollars cash for the house. The problem is for that specific area, um, you know, we would have to put in thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to fix that house up, fix the foundation, fix this, fix that, etc. Plus the ten thousand dollars we would pay him. So fifty plus ten is we're all in at sixty, and now the house is worth. 60 70 like it, it just wasn't worth it so uh, but anyway that same guy kept reaching back out to me for like a year he would just keep coming back to me and coming back to me and coming back to me so uh yeah and his motivation changed to where at the end he basically was like look just just make me an offer like just give me something like a thousand bucks something like that and at the end of the day it's, it just still wasn't worth it wasn't worth the headache even for a thousand bucks like there was no no room there so, um, and even if there was, and we could flip it and sell it, whatever, to, to do what? Make a couple thousand dollars after, you know, nine months of work and the heavy investment, like, it's, it's not worth it. But um, anyway, that's a side note, side story. Just wait longer. That's the idea here, is that motivation changes daily. Somebody wants, they're stuck on their price today. It might change tomorrow. It might be a week, it, you know, so you got to have follow-up, have a follow-up 
drip sequence or um again that's another video for another time to be honest i don't really follow up a whole lot um i'm pretty bad at that but you should follow up and uh and just just wait longer that's basically it so that's number two if this is helping you by the way hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you like this kinds of stuff that just lets me know i'm doing a good job your friend jason is doing a good job uh finally last but not least number three uh, if the person is stuck on a high price, they won't offer you terms, you know, you followed up with them, etc. They still want way too much money. It's just not going to be a good deal for you. Then here's here's the last little bit here is just move on with your life. Just move on with your life. Uh, this is a lesson that I've learned the hard way. Um, see, when you're just starting off, like I was just 18 months ago or 24 months ago, whatever it was, and I didn't know anything about anything, I'd never done a deal before, I just wanted to get into real estate to make a little bit of money. You're so eager and you're so excited to just get a deal. I remember the first house I ever got under contract, um, I was just so excited to get a deal, not realizing like that is not a house you want to buy. Like you don't want it and the price was too high and it just, it was not a deal. Um, but I was so excited and so eager to have it um, that you, you're just desperate. You're just hungry for a deal, for a transaction. You just want to make something. You just want to make something happen. The problem is if it's, here's a, here's an expression, write this down if you, if you can, uh, no deal is better than a bad deal. If you've ever worked in business, you know, you've heard people say having no clients is better than having bad clients. Having no real estate deals, no transactions is better than having bad real estate deals, bad transactions where you're going to lose money, where you're going to make mistakes, where you're going to be like on the hook for stuff and you're going to waste a bunch of time and energy and effort for doing a bunch of work that's never going to profit you, that's never going to produce any fruit in your life. Not having a deal is better than having a bad deal. And so sometimes the best thing you can do is when you have that conversation with the seller, let's go back to our friend Mike, hypothetical Mike. He wants 200,000, the house I, best I can pay is 100,000 and he's stuck on that price. We talk about terms, creative finance. We get to the end of that. He's not interested. Okay, fine. And so I follow up or he, I send him more marketing and he sees more marketing. We circle back around. We have another conversation, still not there. If after like a lot of effort, in following up, let's just say, he's just still stuck on $200,000. Like at some point, I'm just gonna stop picking up the phone because this is a waste of time, right? You gotta move on to other leads. You gotta move on to other things. One of the best ways that you can build your confidence as a real estate investor, especially if you're just starting off, is to have a whole bunch of leads coming in. Because when I sit down and I gotta follow up with leads and there are 12 people that I need to call, brand new leads that have just come in, I gotta call 12 of them today. If one person is stuck on their price and it's just obvious that there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of motivation here. This is probably not a deal. I'm real quick to just be like, hey, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just not the right buyer for you. You know, I could follow up again in 30 days, 60 days if something changes. But, uh, you know, best of luck to you selling the house. Like, I, I really do hope you the best. And I really do. I really do hope them the best. But I got 11 other people I got to talk to. Like, and I only got one hour before I got to go pick up my kids from school. Like, I got to I gotta get this done. And so one of the greatest ways that you can increase your confidence and, and deal flow as an investor is to actually have a bunch of leads coming in, which is why I give away the free guide, by the way, right? Click that link below, grab that free guide, seven free things, free marketing things that you can do to get your phone and inbox blowing up today. It's it's all the same things that I use to do all my deals, etc. I still to this day have not spent a penny on any marketing for any of the deals that I've done. Uh, in fact, I've never spent any a penny on any of the houses that I bought because I always have other partners or we borrow money or whatever. So I've not spent any money on marketing. I've not spent any money on uh, the actual houses. I have nothing invested into the houses except for my own work. And so it's really easy, number three here, to move on with your life and just say, hey, you know, thank you, thank you for your time. You know, I appreciate the phone call, but this is just not something I'm interested in. It's easier for you to tell them no if you got a whole bunch of other people you got to talk to. If you, if this is the only lead you have and it's the only person you're talking to, you're gonna like stretch yourself into all these different contortions to try to make the deal work when really there's just no deal here and you just got to move on with your life. So offer terms and, and see if you can do some creative financing, subject to seller financing. And if that doesn't work and the conversation just kind of dies, hey, it's okay. 
You put them into a drip sequence or you call them up a couple weeks later if you want to, you know, follow up. It's probably, it's good practice. I don't do it very well. I should, I, I need to do a lot better at follow up, but, you know, follow up with them. But at the end of the day, like, if it's just not a deal, just move on with your life. Go get some fresh leads. Go talk to some fresh people. Go talk to people that actually are motivated and are ready to sell their house or they are willing to, to negotiate with you and do some creative terms, et cetera. So that's my best advice to you. If somebody wants a price that's way too high, offer terms. If that doesn't work, follow up. If that doesn't work, just move on with your life, my friend. Just move on with your life. Move on to the next person. Next, that's what you got to do. Hey, sorry, this didn't work out. No problem. Next, just go on to the next lead. So if this has been helpful, hit that like button. If you want to know more about creative financing, like the difference between subject to and seller financing and how that all works, click or tap this video here. And if you want to know about the big shift I'm making in my business personally to hopefully, Lord willing, 10x my revenue in this year. Click or tap this video here. Again, my name is Jason Baca. I wish you the best. I'll see you in the next video.